Hello, welcome to the Jackson Harris Show. Today I am with, what's your name? Jordan Scott from Foul Ball Safety Now. And um, today we'll be talking about the, uh, your, like your program, your, like your um, Foul Ball Safety Now. So yeah. would, you, would you like to tell me the story about this organization? Appreciate it, Jackson. So about two years ago at this time, after the little girl got hurt in Houston, there was a big incident that happened uh, in, in the spring of 2019 where a little girl got hit with a ball that was probably traveling over 100 miles per hour and she had serious injuries. And I knew at that time that I needed to do something about it. As a baseball fan, I, I already knew that these incidences occurred. I never really gave it much thought on a personal level about being hurt. But when I realized that children were in situations where they really had no business to be, um, I felt like it was time to address this. And I have been addressing this for like two years now and even calling all upon major leagues and the minor leagues to make sure that there's an independent netting council that comes in. There's 30 major league ballparks and there's 120 minor league ballparks that are all connected to the major leagues. The major leagues pays the salaries of those minor league ball players. And I believe all of those ballparks and their fans need to be properly protected and they are not. They're they're not, it's not protected. That's correct, right? I, I conducted a survey three months ago. I called 100 minor league ballparks. I tried to reach all 120 of the minor league ballparks. I reached close to 100 and I found out that at least 42 of the nearly 100 box offices that I talked with still had no netting past end of dugouts. Where did that little girl get hurt in 2019? Past the end of dugout. Yeah, um, that is, um, it's pretty sad with the baseballs. Um, sh should you think it should be, shouldn't be extended about probably 70, 80 more yards away mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. all the people like these these people hitting foul balls like 100 miles an hour um probably going mm -hmm. around hitting foul there there's some players that hit foul balls some really don't um well foul balls are unfortunately they're part of the game some are not as serious as others so it really should not be up to you and i to have just a one-on-one -on -one discussion. It's the start of something, which is very, very important. But we need to have all sides represented and finally, finally have a real meeting instead of these people take a position on foul balls. This way, we'll have a dialogue. And the only way that we know because you and I, Jackson, we may not be architects and engineers. There needs to be like an independent netting council because they know already how fast and how often those thousands of foul balls are going into those sections. So they should really be stating to us and Major League Baseball and the minor league baseball community. They need to tell us these are where the nets need to go, period. We can have a discussion. We can talk about whether the balls can come up and whether they can come down, if it's appropriate, whether it's not. That all happens with a discussion, which there's never been real discussion. But before that happens, in the meanwhile, there are 42 minor league ballparks today that are in bad condition. The State of the Union and the minor leagues are in shambles. If you can continue operating a ballpark, knowing what you know, that things do get crushed past end of dugouts. Unfortunately, two years ago, it was a human being. 
I have one video this year of something in Arizona where it could have been a human being. It was a beer. It was a beer that got crushed, but it could have been inches away from somebody's face. And this is what's not happening, Jackson. There's no independent netting council. Who are the architects and engineers telling us how high, how far, how wide all of these nets need to go? It should, well, the, you'll see here, the nets should have been about probably about 50, about 50 feet tall, cover the whole area where the foul balls hit. So, or it should be, it shouldn't be spent, extended with, um, with people in mind. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is a bigger problem because baseball has known about this for a long, long time. And in my mind, they are a dishonest organization because how they know in advance, it's not a matter of if somebody will be seriously injured, it's when. And I believe most families, if they knew in advance that their child could have been part of a weekly or a bi-weekly statistic, there's no way they would have brought their children into a section where they'd be taking a chance on their safety in a week or two weeks where they would be part of the statistic of going to emergency room. So I'm hoping the general public, people that are finding this conversation will start thinking about, wait, baseball knew that there were gonna be people taken to the emergency room? Yes, they did. And they didn't tell us about it in advance? No, they didn't. And all they did was put something like on the back of the e-ticket that says they're not responsible. They did that because if they hurt people, the people can't even get their medical bills paid for, Jackson. No, it's, uh, it's understandable with um, the Major League Baseball and the Minor League Baseball. You're not responsible for your animal code. They should have been – no, here's the problem. Here, they should have been – we, we could pay for your medical bills if you get hurt by your a baseball. Not like saying we can't help you with nothing. It's just, a, it's just their major, major rules, apparently, with, with the major league baseball company or the minor league, apparently. Yeah. Well, the major leagues, they pay the salaries of the minor leagues. So, for example, there's the St. Louis Cardinals. And then there's the Peoria Chiefs, which are the A-level team, Peoria, Illinois. Um, the St. Louis Cardinals, which is the major league organization, pays the salaries of the Peoria Chiefs. This year in Peoria, uh, they did not even have nets over the dugouts. And if you've looked at my website, there's a ball that goes in between those two guys in Tampa Bay before they had nets over the dugouts at major league games. Most of the minor league teams, thankfully, do have netting over the dugouts. But this year in Peoria, there were no nets even over the dugouts. And what I did was I rented an airplane and I had a banner fly over the stadium. If you've seen the website, at Foul Ball Safety Now, I felt like it was time to make a statement. And how the Cardinals, who are making billions of dollars, can allow the Peoria Chiefs, to have no netting even above the dugouts. So we know things are getting crushed past end of dugouts. And to, to, I thought we were past this a few years ago. And I found out different that they, were, they told me they were waiting for their nets. They were on order from Europe. And I was like, this is unbelievable. So baseball knows about all of this, they're fearful that the general public is going to learn that baseball has been concealing all this hidden and, and data about injuries and how regularly these injuries happen. That's when families are going to get upset because they'll know they got away without their children getting hurt. But when they figure out that they're growing families, we're going to games year after year after year after year. And baseball knew they could have been part of a statistic, a bad statistic. I think the families are going to get mad, and they should. 
they should start. Now, here's the thing. So, I know the baseball is very important to everybody. They, they, mm-hmm. Everyone like the playoffs and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And you're right. We should get extended netting to go mm-hmm. out on these baseball fields. Mm-hmm. And, um, but what you do, you can't get, if you can't get like, in contact, what are you supposed to do with, the major league baseball. What are you supposed to do? You can't do anything. Well, what what I'm trying to do at foul ball safety now, I have two petitions. One petition is to end the baseball rule, which is document is over 100 years old. It was created in 1913. So baseball knows as a business that they can continue hurting people and they're not going to be held responsible for it. And that's one petition people can sign to repeal the baseball rule. And the other petition is to demand nets. We believe both of them will sort of work hand in hand because if the baseball rule is repealed, then all of a sudden you'll see nets popping up all over the place because baseball doesn't want to hurt anyone else because they'll be sued going forward. But all these people that I've been interviewing for my book in the past, they're very bitter. They're hurt. They had their, they never had their bills paid for. They never got an apology. They stopped watching baseball. They don't even put on the game on TV. And they're very grateful. They're very happy that their children are not even playing baseball. So they're passing down their disgust to their children their fears to their children. So this should be addressed. And these fans, how many are there that have lost eyes and have had a crushed head? Too many, and they should all get an apology. They should all have their bills paid for. They should all be welcomed back. But baseball won't do that, because if they do that, then they're admitting some sort of guilt and they, they are saying that you would be the last person this happens to, and it won't happen again. So the families may not accept that. They, may, they, they will only accept uh, baseball's gestures if they really mean it. Man, um, that's horrible. Actually, that's, it's horrible. Yeah, it's, you know, and, and people, people know this. It's not just the industry of baseball executives. It's the, believe it or not, it's the baseball writers because they only write about the game. They may tell their own families to sit behind nets, but they're not really telling the readers. Same thing with the broadcasters. When you hear these guys talking on TV, when did you ever hear one of them say, oh, if that fan gets hit, their medical bills are not even paid for. The networks don't want you having an honest discussion about it. So that's unfortunate. And then the players themselves, because in the minor leagues, they're all trying to be major leaguers and they're young guys. They tell their own families to sit behind the nets, but they can't really be- make a big protest because they're, they want to be major leaguers. They don't want to upset their chance of being major leaguers. And then when you, they be, do become major league players and make millions of dollars, what are they doing for the minor leaguers who were in the same position they were a few years ago by saying, you know what? We need to take the burden off these younger players and also protect the fans. The burden on the younger players are, they know maybe it won't be them, but somebody in their community is going to hurt someone. So I believe there's a collective responsibility. So I believe there's mud on everyone's face mud on everyone's faces and for some reasons at the end of the day it's the executives who work for the owners that for some reason have been very slow in addressing this netting issue at the same time go back to the 1970s 1970 alan fish was a 14 year old young man and he got killed at the Dodger game. And when, what did they do after that? Did they have an honest discussion with their season ticket holders? Oh, and say, definitely. hey guys, we need to tell you something. 
this could happen again, but they didn't. Yeah, um, I do support your organization. Thank you. Because um, we do need more netting in the fields, like in the Major League Baseballs and the Minor League Baseballs, and also – if the if the major league company, you know, the major league and the the and the, you know the minor league, wouldn't do any something, what do you do when you do that? But do you call the governor or you call the president? Just to pass a bill to make the rule go away. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. If you look at my website, I reached out to the governors of Illinois and Florida and Arizona at foulballsafetynow.com. Everything that I've written has been there, letters, outreaching. Um, absolutely, we need uh, an act of Congress and they need to abolish this baseball rule. And I believe that can happen and, and we have to try to make that happen. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's a very good point. Should it be a, um, so if we had to like storm up to, no, this is just a um, example here. If we yeah. have to storm up to the Major League Baseball and prote protest, saying, "Please remove the baseball rule," we we cover your we don't cover your insurance bullcrap. With we cover your medical bills. Thank you very much. If, I think both of them will go kind of hand in hand. So. Baseball has like that little micro print that says, if you get hurt, we're not responsible. Imagine if they put that micro print up on the scoreboard. All of a sudden, families would be seeing that little tiny micro print enlarged. And they'd probably be asking questions because nobody really pays much attention to the little, little tiny print. But if they enlarged it, all of a sudden, families would be like looking at it like, whoa. That's pretty interesting. Uh, why, uh, why are we seeing this now all of a sudden in large letters? And if they did, they'll realize that they were sort of in harm's way all of the time. Um, it, it really can't, they really should not be allowed to, be, to put you in a position to maim you. Unfortunately, that's been the, that's been the uh, status quo of baseball going back to, to, the, to the past and to the present, where you've gone to the game and you were unfortunately in a position, a vulnerable position, which you did not really think about that you were. You didn't think your children were vulnerable. You, you were there to have a good time. Everybody relaxed. You didn't think a brick was coming down every hour or two and coming close to hitting one of us. Same thing with the landlord who owns a building. If they have knowledge of a loose brick, you know, they're gonna be liable for knowing about those loose bricks that fall every week or every two weeks and come close or connect with us. That's not, that should not be allowed. So. Yes, um, it should not be allowed to have the baseball rule going into place right now. Um, I did hear probably we're talking, they were talking about baseball before the COVID hit and all that about removing that baseball rule. They were been talking about it in the middle uh, before the pandemic and all that through. Um, I think the baseball rule can be removed and the nets should be extended and um yeah yeah and and i think the way that needs to happen is with an act of congress with an independent netting council they'll tell us where the nets need to go not the baseball establishment telling the fans these are where we're putting the nets we need an independent netting council who knows where the balls go how fast they go how far how wide? Mrs. Goldblum, a widower, she, Mrs. Goldblum, who was killed at the Dodger game in 2018, Erwin, his, her, her husband, the widower, has been talking to me. He's been on my press conferences. 
Um, and he's hopefully going to be a spokesperson moving forward uh, with audiences like the one that you have so they can get an informed uh, update on, on what's happening. So there are people that are speaking up. So that's the good thing. Yes, um, I did see right here on your website right here, ML, MLB has, has been taking a few steps in the right direction, extending netting, but honestly, it can go all the way down, down to the pool. It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. There is not a player in here that would, would be in favor of that. Right, that's a player's quote. That may not be my quote, but yes, there was a baseball player. Usually the baseball players speak up after some child or somebody gets hurt. And then they speak, but that's it. They're not really having a, a longer conversation. They're not inviting the fans in. So I'm trying to, at Foul Ball Safety Now, hear about fans' stories and hearing about what they would like, what they believe is the next steps that Major League Baseball needs to do. And I think once everyone starts figuring out that baseball knew and they know the solutions, and they've been keeping it a secret from us that about all the people that have been injured and how often people do get injured. There's been an NBC report, which if you did all the numbers and all the teams, the Los Angeles Times thought maybe 4,500, 4,500 people were, were injured by foul balls between 2012 and 2019. Now, out of those 4,500 people, I'm not saying everyone had a crushed head and a lost eye, but it's unfortunate. Those are baseball injuries, people that have reported to first aid from maybe a, a, a broken finger or a broken nail. But unfortunately, there are more serious injuries. And those are the injuries that are in, I'm interested in talking to people about because they didn't think they were going to go there and lose an eye. They may have thought they were going to have an opportunity to catch a foul ball. Everyone looks at foul balls with fun. You, you, you think of foul ball, you think of fun in games. Oh, I'm going to go to the game and catch a foul ball. Until it happens to you, you're not really aware that it could change your life. Would you tell me um, anything about um, all the injuries some of these people's already had? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, just the people that I've met, I've met two teenage girls by the name, both by the name of Alexis, one who was hit, had a serious head injury when she was four, and the other one who had a serious head injury when she was 10. They're both now 14 and 17. I've been talking to them. I've been talking to um, Erwin Goldblum. His wife was killed at the Dodger game. I've been talking to Stephanie Wapensky. Stephanie was hurt at the Boston game. Luckily, all she had was stitches. She got hit in the head. Um, I'm talking to a couple of other folks, people that were hurt in Houston, also had her jaw wired for a couple of months, couldn't talk. Um, another gentleman who lost his eye, he couldn't, he couldn't, uh, he lost his eye. His eye doesn't work anymore. It's in his body, but he could, you know, it doesn't work. You know, he lost his eye and he's not even interested in watching baseball anymore. And these are just a handful of people that I know, me personally, that I've interviewed and that have been part of my press conferences of foul ball safety now. And I, I know I'll be meeting more people. I'm interviewing people for my book and the book keeps on getting thicker and more interesting. And, you know, I'd love to come back on your show once the book is done. That, that will be actually great. Um, I see I interview, so I'd like to tell you my, about myself. I sure. interview every week. Um, I find a guest on you know, the, the, the website I found you on. Yep. And I interview these people. So I think last weekend, last weekend I interviewed a cosmetologist. Uh-huh. Okay. This thing, and he told me about all this stuff and I have a very interesting and I'm very, very interesting in the COVID-19, the baseball, the anything like mental okay. health. Yes. 
Sure. And I think um, your story should be heard. Appreciate it. Across the, um, across social media, across, um, across YouTube. Yeah, I'm working on it, my friend. I'm working on it. I, I'm trying to reach out to as many people we can reach and try to reach out. So it's continuing. I'm going to keep continuing. Keep continuing. Wow. Um, yes, I'm going. Now, a little bit of more, more questions. Uh, okay. What about the spring trainings with the netting across the spring trainings? Like sure. Yeah, good question. So in March of 2020, right before the COVID thing hit, in March of 2020, I made 30 phone calls to the box offices, 30 calls. This is 2020. Um, I called 30 box offices in Arizona and Florida and found out that 16, 16 of the teams hosting games did still not, did not have netting pass dugouts. And according to the commissioner in 2019, he suggested that teams were going to have so much more netting. Just to revert back, Mrs. Goldblum, who was killed at the Dodger game in 2018, she was, she was killed from a ball that flew behind home plate. So the, the net wasn't high enough behind home plate. And she got hit with a 93 mile an hour ball behind home plate. So all the teams, like I said, probably need to make the nets higher behind home plate. Um, in 2021, um, I did more surveying of the spring training stadiums. I found at least four stadiums in Arizona still did not have netting past end of dugouts. There's a video in Arizona. If you Google beer can foul ball, Arizona, you'll see, this was in 2021, you'll see a ball that was rocketed off the bat landed past the end of the dugout and crushed a beer. Now that could have been a person because it, it came at him like that. And you'll see, you'll see the video. It shows that the nets need work and we need an outside agency to come in and share where the nets need to go. And that's the only way you should be bringing your family to the games, knowing that this ballpark, these spring training ballparks, these 120 minor league ballparks, these 30 major league ballparks have all been inspected before you visit the game. And that has not happened yet. And we need to make that happen. And um, in addition, right now, in addition, we have, you know, we have the new stadium, the Fields of Faith. We have the new stadium, the new Cornfield Stadium. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually, thank you for bringing that up, Jackson. I rented an airplane last week as well and had a message. Instead of Field of Dreams, I wrote on the banner, it said Field of Screams, just to make a statement. So I thought it was important to tell the people to go to the website. And it was an opportunity because there was a lot of people at that game and people did see the plane. Uh, but unfortunately I don't have any pictures as of yet, but I, saw, I, saw, I see the plane it. on YouTube. I saw it. Um, I actually seen it. I actually seen your plane. I was watching the game and I did see your plane. They showed a picture. They showed a um, TV footage. Of your plane I, flying around. Do you, do, do, they showed that on Fox TV. Yeah. Well, I'd love to see it. What? What? Do you remember what part of the game it was? Or can you get me a video of that? I, I can get you a. Um, I have a recorded clip. Good. I, I record the games. If I so if I if I'm oh, gone right. somewhere, I got I have I have YouTube TV on my TV and um I record the games. Oh, so you have a clip for me? I do. Oh, please do. Send it to me. I will. All and, right. And I did see your little plane go across the screen. You can see it. There's a speck of it. A speck. Oh, yeah, no, I'd love to see it. That would be really helpful. And um, 
here's the problem. So the Fox, no, Fox people and the baseball team, they don't give a crap about fan safety. They right. don't. Right. And, um, yeah. Well, if they did, they would have been talking about it and would have taken a position on it a long time ago. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, oh, I oh, edited that out. Um, so, continue. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, baseball knew about this a long, long time ago. The broadcasters, Fox, all the TV networks, they know about this. Their own family members know about this, but they're not having an honest discussion with their viewers because their bosses don't want them to. It'll make everyone nervous. But this should have happened long, long ago. It'll, it would make the TV audience nervous. So if the TV announcers were talking about how often people are sent to the emergency room, that would not make for good TV, unfortunately. They would be scaring the viewers away and they don't want, the, they don't want to do that. They all work together. The baseball executives, the TV, the guys who write for the local newspapers. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing discussion and that's what we're doing here. We're trying to address it. Well, that is, is that all you want to talk about today? I, I think we did a really good job um, and I really appreciate this opportunity, Jackson. So I'm happy to talk with you anytime. All right, thank you. Thank you all for listening and watching. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.